Hey guys, hope you're having a great day. Your old buddy Tim back with Revolved Realty. Joining me today is a good friend, one of our preferred lenders here at Revolved Realty, Brandon Hargrove with Prime Lending. How are you, buddy? Hey, I'm doing great, man. Thank you for uh, giving me a call today. Hey, man, I appreciate you uh, spending some time with us because there's some uh, some stuff out there in the news today. I'm I'm getting a lot of phone calls about it, and. Uh, you know, you know me. I'm I'm not real political. I'm not real newsy. So when something like this happens, I go to the best source I can find. And like it or not, that All would right. be you. <laughs> so uh, the big thing today is uh, the the announcement that starting May first, uh, folks trying to get a mortgage, uh, if they've got a high credit score and a lot of money to put down, they could be penalized or have to pay additional fees. Uh, I guess to help those who have lesser credit scores, less money to put down. Um, a, lot of, a lot of differing things going on. Of course, the politics is really piling on this. Politics aside, um, let, let's go right to, to the heart of this, which is your industry. Can you tell us a little bit about what's going on? Yeah, it's a, uh, this, is, this has been kind of brewing. It's been kind of in the, in, the, in the news for the you know, past three or four months. And there, this is actually, this is actually a small part of a bigger package that is, that has been proposed, uh, actually has, has not been proposed. It's been implemented. And then mm -hmm. there were some problems. There were some issues with the way that some things were being calculated and how, how we were going to go forward. And so they pulled back on some of this bill, but what we're seeing today is, is going to affect come May 1st. It's actually in, in a lot of cases already being applied to mortgage rates. The way I, understand the May 1st thing is that's going to be loans that are delivered to Fannie and Freddie. So loans that have already closed, um, you know, there, there's a, there's a package, there's a time period to get it there. Mm -hmm. So, uh, but absolutely there's some really, there's some really weird pockets inside of their proposal that could mean that your rate could be a little higher if you're putting more money down and have a better credit score. So kind of, kind of odd, kind of goes against a little bit of a common yeah, it, sense. Is it, is it, isn't that backwards? I mean, it if is you backwards. Have a, yeah. you know, if you're if you're someone like like me and like you, you know, we've worked incredibly hard our whole lives. We've saved a little bit of money. We've worked on our credit scores. You know, I mean, prior to this, if you had a the higher your credit score, really the lower your interest rate, maybe. And now it just kind of seems like it's flipped around where those uh, those who do have good good credit and. Uh, uh, cash to put down, or again being being penalized by Freddie and Fannie, uh, and, and for what's what, what's the purpose? Is it to to assist those who are less fortunate to buy homes, or what's what's the thinking behind this whole thing? This is this is first time home buyer driven. This is low to moderate income driven, um, okay. and so just the initiative of once again trying to put people in housing trying to you know put people in the you know to help them qualify you know for mortgages so mm. you know it's it's a balancing act if you if you take away if you take away a little bit on one side <laughs> there the, there is a there's always a risk uh, even it doesn't matter how much money someone makes it doesn't matter how much credit score it doesn't matter how much the down payment is there's always a, a level of risk to any loan mm -hmm. and so there is this big balancing act and when you uh, but but Tim, it's very hard to explain <laughs> when you start <laughs> when you start trying to, uh, you know, I grew I grew up in a in a in a credit union uh, car loan type industry and we did risk based lending all the time. Right. It was mm -hmm. the principle of how I grew up. The more risk, the more it cost. And it was just, you know, it was just and this is this is actually opposite of that. So it's very right. it's very hard for someone who's been in the industry forever to get, you know, to wrap your head around less risk <laughs> means a higher payment. And so it's, right. it's, it's very, very different, but that's, but that's the one it is. And, and really, I think it's two separate issues. One, we're trying to, we're trying to be creative and trying to find ways. I think, I think when we talk about politics, you know, people are trying to help people find ways to qualify for loans, to try to, you know, work that out. It's the other, yeah. it's the other issue that, that, <clears throat> When it gets when it gets into the news, that's a little harder to you know figure out, right? Uh, yeah. DT, DTI, if we can just talk on that just one second, that's mm -hmm. that's that's on its way. So this whole this whole thing was part of a this this what we're talking about today. These adjustments when it comes to down payment and loan to value. This is 
something smaller inside of a bigger package. And so what is on tap middle of May, maybe even the 1st of June, is another round of these adjustments to pricing based on uh, DTI, your your debt. What is income, DTI? Debt to income oh. ratio. So it's it's basically your income compared to or your debt mm. monthly debt compared to your to your income. That was already supposed to be implemented at the same time this was. However, there was a problem with mortgage companies mm. not being able to figure out a way to disclose that properly. Uh, you have to think about income changes a couple of different times by the time you take the application. You say, Tim, what do you make? And you tell me what you make, and it may be hourly, it may be salary. But by the time that we get to the end of it, we've verified, we've checked it out, and now we've got a specific mm. – if it changes $100, it could change your – rate. It, it will change your ratio. Right. And there's going to be all these buckets. So they put a pause on that uh, just for the – you know, for right now. So, but that's coming, and so there's there. This is going to be a this is going to be a continual talking point, right? Uh, as we as we continue, you know, on this moving target. But specifically mm -hmm. today, you know, if if you really want to just kind of dive into who's being affected the most, and it's the bottom line, it's people with a 680 credit score or higher, who's putting 15 to 20 percent down, more mm -hmm. 15 or more percent. Mm -hmm. So uh, that it, well actually. When you're putting, it's it's weird. I'm, I'm sitting here actually looking at some numbers. It's about 25, 15 to 25 percent. Those are the people who are affected the most. So it's even, it's not even people. It's 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 they. It's a targeted area. So uh, this this is a real targeted area and who is being affected in a negative way. So right. there, everyone everyone's going to be affected. That's in between 60 and 95 percent loan to value. But, yeah. but is this uh, is this going to discourage people from putting down twenty percent to avoid PMI? It it could. Uh, it you know one thing is we've seen MI rates uh, really really uh, reward great credit. So we're mm -hmm. seeing these 760, 70, 780 credit scores. We're seeing MI mm -hmm. companies be very aggressive. They they like the risk. They they think it's a very small risk. And so mm -hmm. some of our MI, MI rates that we're seeing are extremely extremely low. However, MI at the end of the mortgage insurance. Yes. Yes. Okay. Uh, and that's and that's and that's when you're not putting 20% down. That's it's kind yeah. of that gap insurance for that. So yeah. uh, it could so, at, Go ahead. The, the you know a couple of the articles that I read I have not I have not necessarily done all the math to it but it's mm -hmm. saying here that a four hundred thousand dollar loan you know it would I'm I'm going to say that based on what I'm seeing in this article it's a forty fifty dollar a month top of yeah. increase yeah yeah now, now, that, it's I mean that's a yeah. yeah that's a hell of a hit though yeah. yeah I mean it really is I mean if you're you know getting a, a four hundred thousand dollar home at current interest rates and then you add forty dollars on top of that. Um, yeah. Again, it just seems like there's, you know, you, you mentioned risk. It's almost as if those who have the the better credit scores and the more money to put down are being, they're the ones paying for the risk mitigation for those on the other end of the scale. The government, and again, I'm not getting into politics. I don't know politics, but the government isn't assuming that risk of those risky mortgages. They are asking the the homeowners with the higher credit score to do so. That's what it seems that's like for me. Yeah, I, I I think I think that's very true. I mean, I think that's what it that's what it looks like. That's what it feels like. Yeah. So, so what what if I'm a a buyer and I've got a a seven hundred credit score and I've got the twenty percent to put down, but I only put down the three percent. Am I still going to be penalized? No, you're not. So, okay. Yeah. So what if I close the deal at 3% and then I do a refi within a year? Do I, is that, is that my loophole? Is that my way around? Re, re, refis are going to have the same pricing adjustments as purchases. Wow. Yeah. So, so if I come back and want to do like a, what do they call it? When I, um, when you come back and you put money down on the principal to recalculate things. So it sounds like they're going to, they're going to kind of get you either way you go. That that is true. It, <laughs> it is true. So, and, and just one more thing is I'm, I'm I've got a little chart yeah. that just kind of popped up, and 
there's always been these these pricing adjustments. They they've been around since they've been around since I started in the business, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, I mean, they've they've always been there on loan. So it's this is not this is not something new. It's just it's a new approach to adjusting these these levels out. Uh, right. As long as I've been in the business, there's always been these adjustments, right? There's always been these mm-hmm. these these type of adjustments. Uh, they're just these are just different. For instance, for an example, it's always been an eighty uh, putting eighty or putting fifteen percent down on a loan is cheaper interest rate than putting twenty percent down. It's been like mm-hmm. that for the last twenty years. Mm-hmm. That doesn't really make a lot of sense either, right? But mm-hmm. but. There was MI to play. There was a small window. It 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 only affected two boxes. This mm-hmm. is affecting a much a much larger right, <laughs> a much larger yeah. box. Six eighty credit score and above. Uh, anything that you're that you're putting, you know, fifteen or percent or more. It's just a it's just a much bigger window. So these these adjustments are just they're just going to be higher. Once again, it's not new adjust. It's it's not. Adjustments are not new, but the level in which they're adjusting is what is really crazy right now. Yeah. Don't you think this gets us back to, I mean, kind of shades of 08 when you had all these uh, uh, borrowers who were not necessarily qualified to borrow? Um, aren't, aren't we kind of approaching that again? It, it feels like that. I mean, that, that's an I, I, that doesn't make me feel good to to say that's how it makes me feel, right? But it is. Yeah. It's how you know when when you started looking at the um, you know the the buckets that you know they were they were hiding some of the the B's and the C's in with the A's and you know and all of that that just that that whole big short if you watch the movie the <laughs> big short just kind of that that stacking order. Mm-hmm. This kind of makes you feel like that, right? That you don't really yeah. know what is really in that stack. <laughs> yeah. Well, you know, what do you so. think this means for for your your industry? Is it just uh, you guys are going to have to explain to folks that uh, you know, congratulations on your great credit score and your your yeah. bank account, but you're going to have to pay these penalties. Yeah, and maybe it's not a penalty. Maybe it's just to help your fellow man fee. Yeah. And- Either way, you have to explain it, right? It doesn't because it just doesn't yeah. make sense when you when you're at the uh, you know when you're talking at the water cooler and you're comparing rates. I I just bought a house and it was this and it it the one thing I would say is we're in a we have been in a volatile rate, right? It's been a mm-hmm. rates have really been up and down. Uh, mm-hmm. We were hitting. I mean, if you just look at the last four weeks, we have been almost at seven. We have been almost at six. <laughs> and then we've been in, we've been we've been north of six five and then now back to six and a half. So and that's that's in just a few days. Yeah. Uh, so right, I think I think when you're out looking for a loan, when you're pre-approved and you're you're talking to your 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 mortgage professional about where my rate is and what I'm doing, if if you're keeping up with that, you already feel like it's volatile anyway. This mm-hmm. is really just one of those things that more than likely has probably already been applied mm-hmm. into the process. Yeah. But uh, now that it's news, people will start talking about it. And once again, as I said earlier, there's more rounds of this coming. There's other adjustments that are that are going to be on its way. But when rates are already volatile and we're kind of doing this wave thing right now, you know, it's just it's just important to be able to understand and be able to kind of communicate it. it. It's hard. It's hard to make sense of it. Uh, but you just have to kind yeah. of explain that, um, you know, it's, it's the, right now it's just a, it's, it's a cost to, you know, not, it's a cost of, of, of a mortgage right now. And so you just yeah. have to be able to kind of work through that, you know? Yeah. And, you know, again, everybody is saying this is, you know, everybody's blaming Biden, but you know, this is coming out of Freddie and Fannie. How much control does he really have over them? Are they the one, they're the ones implementing this? Is it really, is it political or is it economic or is it a combination of both? I think it's I, th- I do think it's political from the standpoint of, you know, we're we're I, I think it has to be somewhat, you know, political. And I'll be honest, mm-hmm. I don't know. Maybe maybe that there's some more research for me to do on really how much control, you know, Biden or his administration would have over this. Yeah. But but I think when you start looking at the core factor of, hey, the other side of this is we're trying to we're trying to we're trying to help people into housing. <laughs> Right. We may not there, – there's going to be a group of people that are not going to like how we're doing that or, or how it's being done. But there right. is an end game of – it's not to hurt everyone. There is an end game, and I'm, I'm not saying that makes 
everybody feel great, but there is an end game to helping people get into housing, which yeah. me and you know that at the end of the day, we believe in, we believe that being in a house is a wealth building tool. We believe we it's do. important. We do believe that's yeah. important. I think, I think, you know, what we have to measure here and what we have to discern through is maybe how we're doing that. What's the best yeah. ways to help people do that? And maybe I'm, you know, maybe we're missing it and, and this really is it, but <laughs> yeah. I, it don't, it just doesn't feel right. It, it doesn't feel like that's the, the, the route to go. Yeah. Well, I, I think it's, I think it's human nature to want to help your fellow man. Sure. I also think it's human nature to resist it when it's mandated upon you. Yeah. And again, I'm not going to get in politics, but you know, I, I, I guess we could be in Russia, you know, there's always, <laughs> there's always that. So, uh, Hey, uh, you, you mentioned the uh, what's going on out there in the market with interest rates, uh, kind of doing a little bit of this and that. Um, any any idea where these things might shake out? Do you think we'll know something by middle of the year or when? You know, I, I, I really think so. We're, um, you know, we're we're due for another uh, rate hike on the on the Fed level uh, with short term rates. Uh, that has been, you know, that has been every time that has happened in the last, not every time, but in the last three or four cycles of rates being raised by the Federal Reserve, it's really pushed mortgage rates down. Uh, mm -hmm. That's where we got our last kind of, you know, drop in, in the mortgage rates. Um, I, I feel like I'm no expert at this, but what I read and what I feel and, and talking to the guys that that are, you know, smarter in the room than I am when it comes to those numbers it feels like more of a trying to find that kind of that moment where, you know, inflation is just kind of, you know, kind of leveled, you know, just a little mm -hmm. bit. So we expect another, you know, drop in Fed or, or an increase in the, in the federal uh, rate. And, and I think that we're going to hear the word pause. Um, and when, and I think when we hear the word pause, uh, that's going to be a really good sign. So if you read an article or you listen to them and you can hear the word after the after the next increase, if you hear the word pause, I think that's going to be a really, really good <laughs> word for us. And I think it's going to, to level out some of this volatility that we've been seeing in mortgage rates. Uh, yeah. we're, st we're still expecting, you know, um, you know, rates to come down a little bit, but uh, you, you just you never know. And. You know, Tim, the, the other side of that is you would be able to speak more of this, the buyer and seller side of the market, right? As as mm -hmm. as rates come down, it actually allows prices to start going up. And so um, it's there's a it, it, you know, all I know is when people ask me, I'm a I'm a believer in real estate um, and I just you know, I won't. I don't think you should get into the. I don't think you should get into the real estate game at any cost. It has to be the right. It has to be the right price. But if you can get into it at a fair price, I just don't think you can wait. I think you have to. I think you have to invest and you have to get in into that. And I've seen, I've seen wealth being, you know, <laughs> I've seen wealth really be created through real estate. And I've seen people, mm -hmm. you know, lose wealth because they procrastinated with with real estate. And so, right. I, yes, I think you know long term rates are, are, are going to come down a little bit, but you know, when, how quick, it's just, it's just really hard to say. Yeah. Are, are you seeing a, uh, an increase in applications? Really we have, it's, it's, I would say that, you know, applications from, you know, in uh, March, April, or probably, you know, even, I would even say 20, 25% up from okay. January, February. Some of that is just January and February are certain or are, are, are a little slower. Uh, mm -hmm. for you know year after year for some people mm -hmm. but I feel like the energy level is much different the you know the people who are we're talking to they're um, you know they're very very they're they're in the game they're motivated they're they're ready to get pre-approvals go look at houses make offers so I, I see that I see that really increasing out there yeah as do we I mean business has picked up uh, quite a bit so all right to uh, to sum up um Starting in uh, May 1st, if you are a, uh, in the market to buy a home and you've got a really above, what, 680 credit score, above? Above 680 uh, credit score and putting 15% or more down. Okay, if you do that, you can expect to pay, at least on a $400,000 home, about $40 extra per month uh, to help your fellow man. <laughs> right <laughs> so we'll, we'll leave it at all that right, brandon hey uh if uh, anyone wants to get a hold of you and talk about this or getting a uh, a mortgage application yeah. in, how do they get a hold of you absolute best number you can call text me 
727-627-6119. Very good. And of course, if you need anything when it comes to real estate, uh, we've got Revolve Realty here, almost 100 agents now. It's like herding cats, Brandon. I mean, you know, I get them all going in a line and one goes off over here. And uh, But uh, we've got almost 100 agents ready to go to work for you if you awesome. are in the market uh, and if you'd like to talk more about what's going on with the uh, the mortgage business. So, all right, buddy, uh, let's uh, let's do this again next all time right. something earth shattering comes out. You got it. Thanks, Tim. All right. Talk to you soon. Bye.